It's most absolutely doing that. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to let that sin sink in for just one second. No, I'm not stalling for time. <clears throat> and yes, anvils all the way. <laughs> Patent pending. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, one, one more. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is actually pretty much the exact same thing from two years ago, but not everybody was here two years ago. And I added one thing at the bottom, TSS agent. Um, <laughs> So season pass, I wrote the Mac version of that. Um, I haven't done anything for it lately because we haven't uh, jailbroken iOS 7, tethered or untethered successfully. So I'll get back, I'll get to that later. Uh, the only thing I actually did in Chronic Dev, besides naming Absinthe, I did actually do that. <clears throat> that was it though, nothing else. Yes, it is. What, what is a good green poison? Absinthe, right? Um, RC 6.1 I worked on, uh, 6.3 uh, 6 as well, but we never released that, so kind of like didn't matter at all. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things actually was air control. It had, there's no pairing whatsoever. It's a very lightweight web, ser uh, web server that runs on the Apple TV too. You can send different commands to it to actually to control it, to drill down into different plugins. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, TSS agent, that was my answer to the fact that uh, sometimes Tiny Umbrella didn't get updated that quickly. It didn't have a dynamic P list for new blobs that, you know, new versions that came out. So every time you wanted to dump your blobs, you had to go grab a new build. And it should work on the device just like it does on your iPhone and your iPad. So I actually had my one flub with that. I think, as all of us have, uh, even if we do actually eventually get, what was it? Um, Evasion 7 working, that firmware is not getting signed anymore, and I might not have saved any of those blobs for you. Sorry. Patent pending. All right, so this is a oh, sorry, damn it, went too far. Oh, it's gonna start all over. Oh, it's glorious. <laughs> it's glorious. <laughs> you had to see it one more time. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> and hold on, hold on. Yes, okay. So the, what is the boot ROM? I'm not really gonna go too deeply into that. Um, it's been covered by so many other people and can be covered so much better. I'm not a low-level person when it comes to the jailbreaking stuff. I just make it easier for people once the smart work is done. <clears throat> DFU mode, the chain of trust, why it needs to be broken, what the issue is with you know the Apple TV 3 not being jailbroken, what makes it more difficult. Um, attack surface, define what that is, why the smaller surface, surface on the Mac, or not on the Mac, on the Apple TV makes it much more harder to jailbreak and to, uh, to get an injection vector. What are launch daemons? Uh, what, is, what is a service? Um, I mean, brief, very, very high level of all these things. iOS 7 troubles, why even the tethered version isn't out yet. And of course, science. <sighs> okay, so right now I'm just gonna walk through the standard boot chain, normal boot, no DFU mode, nothing like that. <clears throat> Anvils are just glorious. Okay, so the boot ROM loads, very small chunk of code, I think approximately 64 bytes. Um, it's on the chip itself, so you need to actually, to any, any boot ROM exploit needs to be uh, patched by subsequent chips that are released. Uh, it goes into low level boot, goes into iBoot bootloader from there. Then the kernel, Eureka, you're in user land. Very standard. I mean, there's more things in between device tree and stuff like that, but again, very high level. But you never at any point validate, invalidate the chain of trust. So if you don't do that, 
you can't get in there. You can't start executing code. You can't start running your tweaks. <clears throat> now, a broken chain of trust. Still boot ROM, but you're in DFU mode. You send an exploit with Lime Rain or Shatter, which never got released. <clears throat> Won't get into that. <laughs> send a patch to IBSS and IBEC, which actually dynamically uh, on the fly does all the kernel patching so you can still send a normal stock kernel so you can do a semi-tether. Just, like just like an iPhone, just like anything else, if you are jailbroken but it's a tethered one and the semi-tether isn't in place, if you don't do a uh, tethered boot, it's not gonna boot. You're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> Eureka in user land, owned in user land. You have invalidated the chain of trust. So once you do that, at any point, everything else is out the window. But since it starts all the way at the boot ROM for the Apple TV 2, then it makes everything so much easier. They can't patch it via any software updates and everything from there, that's getting you in. That's getting you in the door. That's what's called the injection vector. If there wasn't for Lime Rain, Shatter, the Apple TV 2 might not have ever gotten jailbroken. I don't know. Or if it did, it would have been subsequently harder every single time. Uh, they patched one of the vulnerabilities that are found in iBoot or anywhere else further up the chain. Ah, oh, I love it. And to be fair, I actually stole this slide 95% minus that from something I hate Snow did for his school. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> So yes, it's a very, very, very small chunk of code. So the fact that we even found two vulnerabilities in the A4 chip, or not we, like them, um, that that was found is miraculous. It's so unlikely you were probably more likely to win the lottery seven times and then just shower in mountains of money, like Scrooge McDuckie and Volts. Yeah, not happening. <clears throat> So it's yeah, you know, built-in anti-brick. You, know, you get into the DFU mode. As long as there's no hardware malfunction, you cannot brick a device. It's practically impossible. Since it's in the chip itself, it's a year in advance. You, you know, iBoot's always going to be much more recent. They're going to be able to patch things. They're going to be able to re work on it much more frequently because software updates are a lot more frequent than hardware updates. I mean, the hardware updates are frequent, but you know, several times a year versus like maybe once a year. <clears throat> It loads the low-level bootloader, and ever since the A4, there's been no, they've had crashes in newer boot ROMs, I think A5, maybe A6, and then I think uh, Josh mentioned maybe it is hack in the box speech that him and Cyril had many late night discussions and arguments on, you know, why is it, why is it crashing, is it exploitable, can we actually use it? I don't know, I know they've had crashes, not, as far as I know, nobody's ever had an exploit. I think we'd all know, I hope. <laughs> so you've heard the term attack surface thrown around a lot of different times. And essentially all that is is the area that you have to actually find vulnerabilities. Since there's no default web browser, I mean, yeah, you can jailbreak and get the couch surfer one, but that's not on there by default. So you know, anything like star, all those jailbreakme.com, never. I mean, part of it actually did work once when it was... Uh, two or 3.0, whatever, whatever the last jailbreak me was, he actually, the, the font glyph one. So Comex made it so a font glyph exploit, whatever he had with that, the kernel one that was actually bootstrap, not bootstrap, like added to that as part of that, part of that package, he found a way to make that work on the Apple TV. How? No idea. Genius. I, yeah, <laughs> it is absolutely science. <laughs> um, I kind of feel bad for whoever works on uh, mo mobile backup two at Apple because we just savage it. I mean, at least two absence, probably a few. I mean, I don't know how many times we've used it to get in there since uh, since A5 plus, two or three times. But that's not running on the Apple TV two. It, it's listed in the service plist file, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's not the actual binaries, the backup, uh, backup agent and backup agent 2 are non-existent on the Apple TV. So since you can't get at them, since they're not there, how are you going to exploit them? 
<clears throat> of the, and the AFC2 directory traversal, which Stephen brought up, was not enough to actually get through the door. That got you access to certain paths or something like that. I, again, these guys know more about this than I do. Um, but it wasn't enough. You still needed to exploit because, you know, lockdown, um, lockdown D runs at an escalated privilege. So that's why it's so, so useful to actually get at it. So what is a service? Um, a service runs in the background. It's not, you know, it's not facing you. Most users will never deal with it in any way. Like Mobile Backup 2 is a service. <clears throat> Um, they're all cataloged in a, the plist that I was talking about inside system li library lockdown. <clears throat> and lockdown D is like the control center. Everything runs through that. Everything has to communicate with that. Like iTunes communicates with it to do backups, to do restores, the whole shebang. And it's, it's, a, it's a, I think, a SSL3 encrypted. It, it communicates in big, long plist files. Or not files, but like, you know, data sending back and forth. Um, so here's an example of the libexec, uh, the libexec folder on an Apple TV versus a iPhone on iOS 5.0.1, and it was 444 on the Apple TV because their versioning numbers are maddening. <clears throat> so as you can see, backup agent and backup agent 2 are added on the iPhone, do not exist on the Apple TV. A few ones further down, AirTunes D doesn't exist on, a, on an iPhone, it's AirPlay. <clears throat> well, it does, but it's the AirPlay server. Um, nothing else of real importance, just a basic different differential list. What is a daemon? I mean, service, back to that. That runs, they generally run at boot. I don't think they always have to or always do. Um, and they're managed by a special plist, uh, which is just a special form of ax Apple XML files, for those of you who don't know that. <clears throat> a lot of things are configured with those, a lot. Um, oh yeah, they're assigned having a plain text copy in the DYLD cache. What that is, the frameworks themselves are actually pretty, you're pretty sure all the frameworks themselves, private frameworks, whatever, everything that you link to, to actually create the UI, talk to map services, whatever, are all in this huge file that you have to unpack with something. Dustin wrote something once, of course he did. DYLD D cache or something like that, and then Kenny TM wrote another one. I don't remember the name of it, I'm sorry. Good to see you, though. <laughs> All right. What's up? I can't see me with them on, or without, or ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not dead, I'm brick. <laughs> and uh, TSS Manager is actually a daemon, so I thought that would be a good example of to, to show how that works. So. I know, no picture, sorry. And that's really small, but that's just basically a package listing of the uh, Debian package for TSS Manager. And here's a plist, which nobody can read, I don't know what I was thinking. But essentially, you just have launch arguments, you have um, a nice argument, which means uh, it, it determines what the scheduling priority level is, whether it launches it, uh, whether it runs at launch, or what, what the timeout is in between when it runs, because it runs every time whether it stays alive. So some daemons need to be a, a, around on demand at all time. They're always running. There's always an instance of it. This one, since it's just save, grabbing blobs and sending them to Zurich server, only needs to run every so often. I think I have it set to run once a day or something like that. And I've made some mistakes with that, and he's wanted to murder me on several occasions. I'm sorry. <clears throat> just sending up junk data over and over and over again, and why aren't you accepting this? Um, but yeah, it's essentially just a plist file that manages how often it runs, has where you redirect the log files to so you don't spam the console log. Please, please do not spam the console log, whatever you do. Just a regular system log, don't do it. Um, so that's it, that's just a basic service, a basic review of one. I hope that made some kind of sense. <clears throat> Never gets old. Maybe for you guys, it did for me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> to be fair, Stephen actually wrote that in there, and I just emboldened it. So, <laughs> so it's not new that the file system defaults to read only. And it's kind of a no-brainer. You don't want to modify things. Why would it ever be read-write? <clears throat> 
So you normally, what we would normally do in our custom IPSWs that we would create to jailbreak the Apple TV, I mean, you don't have to create a custom IPSW, that's just what Season Pass and Snowbreeze do. <clears throat> we would patch the FSTAB file and say, and what, what the FSTAB file is, it tells the file systems how to mount, you know, what, who their owners are, what their, whether it's read-write, whether it's read-only, whatever. So we would patch that file, because that's what tells, tells the, uh, I don't know the proper term for what it talks to, the, the, the launch D or whatever, how to mount everything. So we would patch that, get read write, and that was like the initial jailbreak. Like once you have FSTAB patch and you can actually write to the file system, that's like one of your foots into the user land door. We, uh, as, you know, Evasion, Evasion 7 never got updated. It, it is absolutely compatible with the Apple TV too, but there's different th patches might need to be taken out. I insist that VM map enter will not work. Steven says otherwise, I think I'm right. <laughs> no surprises there. Um, yeah, so that's why between that and, uh, you know, busyness, just I have a job that I've had for the last year that I absolutely love. I don't get to work on jailbreak stuff as much. It makes me very sad. It really does. Um, and I am a little lazy. So. Time. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's why iOS 7, just even on the Apple TV too. And the, the most unfortunate part, it all kind of combines together is since I didn't save those blobs properly, even if we did get this thing working, which I'm going to you know, show a picture of in a minute because I have a serialized Apple TV too, even if we did get it working, it'd pretty much just be for us. And that would kind of suck for everyone else and that would be, what's the point? We're still probably going to do it just to try, but just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, if you trademarked science, you would have royalties on everything. How awesome would that be? So that is a picture of the serialized Apple TV too. Um, it does not have, you know, it's a normal 32-pin connector, um, but there are certain receivers on like little transponders on the on the board itself. But if you solder the right wires to. There's this little red thing you can buy from SparkFun that you just run the, white, run the wires into, get a USB cable, and it gives you serialized output like they used to be able to with any 32-pin connector, uh, pre-lightning, iPhone, iPad, iPod. We were actually trying to mess with it. I, I brought it here yesterday, but I forgot the power cable, so that was, you know, helpful. I think we're up till 3 a.m. messing with it. Probably, it was probably fine. No, no, <laughs> we kind of keep everyone awake. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so one of the favorite things of my speech two years ago was when people are like, wait, never mind everything else you said. Apple TV 3, whatever, who cares? Pizza on demand, what is that? So. So awesome. I miss it so much. <laughs> I need a minute. I'll be okay. <laughs> I'm so foot clapped. <laughs> so the Apple TV one, you could just do such glorious things on it. You know, we had full access to the USB port. You could plug in. I have my main media center. I have all 480p stuff because my main media center is still my Apple TV one, which sucks at anything past that. But I watch a lot of cartoons, and those kind of work out there. <laughs> They're awesome. I actually had this whole thing planned for Josh's speech. We were going to do this Lana Archer thing, and Craig's like, nope. <laughs> you know the old saying, nope. <laughs> so... It was really, really, really ghetto. I mean, it was like sticking your head out and saying ding dong when somebody rang the bell ghetto. It was bad. So I ran a website, or not a website, my own web browser that I just threw together with WebKit. And I would script using UI scripting the different elements of the Papa John's and Domino sites to actually order your pizza. And it did work many, many times. It was awesome. <laughs> Thoroughly tested and Neato TV approved. <laughs> yeah, so you could have multiple pizzas, add sides. It was glorious. 
And I guess that's, that's it. Thank you. Questions, oh, I could absolutely answer some questions if I have time. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a few minutes, guys. If anyone has any questions, Stephen Bueller, Stephen Bueller. <laughs> anyone? Really? Nothing? God, I suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> all right, all right. So, like, all we understand your slides and all. So, when is the Apple TV three jailbreak coming out? It came out yesterday. None of you noticed. I was very saddened, so I just threw the files away and gave up. <laughs> Any more questions, guys? Where did you get those uh, boom, boom, boom animation effects? Oh. That's the anvil, baby. <laughs> it's just part of Keynote. It's, it's a running joke from two years ago. Anvil is his nickname. He's part of our entourage. You guys know him as Josh Tucker. We exclusively call him Anvil. Actually, I wanted to drop him at the end of my speech. <laughs> just like, drop Anvil, walk off stage. <laughs> but then we couldn't find anything soft enough to drop him on. He's kind of heavy. I think it's all that ballet. <laughs> No, it's all muscle. You have you don't just have the, the glamour muscles. You have like the full core because you're a gymnast. It's it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Any more questions, guys? No. Okay, if you just give us uh, a few minutes, and then um, up next will be sure next. So just uh, two or three minutes, guys. Woo! Woo! Lana. <laughs> <laughs>